In the span of about three weeks, Lebanon has endured a mass terror attack, hundreds of bombs, mass displacement, and now the threat of a grand invasion. When pagers exploded on all sorts of public spaces, one killed a little girl carrying it to her dad when it rang. And in the aftermath, terrified mothers switched off their baby monitors for fear of those exploding too. How can anyone, media or otherwise, look at these scenes and describe them as anything other than terrorism? from the New York Times in their fun email quiz. They included a question on the Monday bombing that killed over 500 people. Our tragedy is trivia. War crimes in Lebanon and Palestine are described as feats of military strategy or just innocent mistakes. They celebrate a so-called targeted attack, never mind that it decimated an entire neighborhood. The message is delivered. Arab lives are worth less. The heartbreak and anger of the violence are one thing, and then seeing it described as amazing and impressive is a whole other heartbreak. Murdered children are collateral damage, and we are repeatedly forced to cite the death of our women and children to prove our innocence as if all of our men are guilty and disposable. When I check in on him, my nephew responds, don't worry, auntie. My brother tells me not to spend too much time worrying and watching the news, to try and live my life normally. I say yes. I don't tell them that I can't sleep without my phone under my pillow anymore. I don't tell them that I've spent the past year obsessing over the news, having near daily whiplash from flicking through a story about a bombed hospital to some work email to some other story about a starving child. That I can't understand how anyone is living their lives normally. I loop through the news and feel like I'm stuck in a twisted joke. Because how can this still be going on an entire year later? How are we now watching everything happen twice as Israel speed runs through its horrific Gaza playbook in Lebanon? Countless atrocities in Gaza, from torturing prisoners to bombing hospitals. And every time, Zionists further contort themselves to justify the action. No one stopped them in, Leban in Palestine, so they're now emboldened to repeat it all in Lebanon. twice displaced and with many relatives and neighbors killed. My parents were first forced to leave our home in the south of Lebanon to move to Beirut several months ago. My mother was at first worried about her garden. She loved her plants and used to spend most of her waking hours taking care of them. My parents grow olive trees for our family. We feel so proud of our olive oil in the south. I love those trees so much that I have a tattoo of an olive branch on my arm. Now with the looming ground invasion, I keep thinking, have I seen my hometown for the last time already? The town is right on the border and Israel is demanding a so-called buffer zone. As the colonizers that they are, they want to redraw the maps and break up the country into bite-sized pieces they can swallow. They will keep trying to convince you that we somehow deserve this. As they did with the Palestinians, now with the Lebanese, we are all guilty by birth. Outlandish lies to justify future deaths. Netanyahu claims that every kitchen in Lebanon has a secret missile stash. The only secret in my mother's kitchen is the fig jam she hides from me when I visit. As the Israeli army inches through the south of Lebanon once again, I repeat James Connolly's words. Our demands most moderate are, we only want the earth. We want our earth. We want to be able to return.
return to our homes and tend to our olive trees. We want liberation for Lebanon and for Palestine and from every oppressor. I have hope. A decade ago, perhaps not so much in Ireland, but in the rest of Europe and the US, Palestine was a taboo word. It was always too complicated. It's no longer too complicated. People all over the world are demanding justice and liberation, demanding an end to occupation. We, ordinary people like us gathered here today, can pressure the Irish government to earn its reputation. This country has a reputation of being staunchly pro-Palestine. Little kids in Gaza hold up signs that say, thank you Ireland. And while the people who know this oppression have always called for liberation, the Irish government gets to revel in this reputation completely unearned. They make speech after speech. that they are difficult to fully comprehend anymore. Thousands killed in Palestine and Lebanon. One million people forcibly displaced in Lebanon. What does it mean for hundreds to be killed in one day? How many is too many? We demand urgent real action to hold Israel to account, to mark the red lines that have been crossed, sanction Israel and enact the Occupied Territories Bill. The stalling is costing precious lives every single day. As always, now and forever, free Lebanon and free Palestine.